dear viewers, I am back with an another interesting and very intriguing topic of nuclear medicine, radioactive equilibria in nuclear medicine. The contents of this presentation are like this. What is the definition of radioactive equilibrium? What is its application? What is the Bateman's equation? Transient equilibrium, secular equilibrium and examples of application in nuclear medicine. Now, what is radioactive equilibrium? It is the stationary state of daughter radionuclide with an equal number of production and decay reactions occurring in a certain time interval or the state which exists when every radionuclide of a series is decaying at the same rate at which it is being produced. For example, as an analogy, I can say if my balance of the amount in bank is X rupees and if my fresh salary of uh, delta will be accredited into it and I use it or exhaust it throughout the month, then the remaining amount will be again X rupees. This is quite an analogy to the production and decay of the intermediate daughter radionuclide in the series. Now simulating that, I have shown in this first picture with the plastic containers and a red colored liquid, the parent radionuclide, the daughter radionuclide and the stable granddaughter. Now this is the parent radionuclide with some activity and it is a hypothetical situation here where there is no radioactivity of daughter radionuclide and so this uh, is actually not really practically possible because there is always a constant production and so in the equilibrium state there is some amount of constant production of daughter radionuclide. Now once this is separated through elution, for example this is uh, an application which later we'll be talking about and when this gets eluted or separated from the mixture of parent daughter radionuclide then there is a time gap required to re-establish this equilibrium. Now for what is the application as I was telling it's about the radionuclide generators for the production of short-lived radionuclides T half being less than 24 hours for these daughter radionuclides in the nuclear medicine setup the in-house secondary production mode of radionuclides. It was called as cow and it's still being called, uh, called like that because uh, it is a very important output that this generator gives for the nuclear medicine department, uh, for example, the most famous cow, the monotechnetium, the technetium 99M being the workhorse radionuclide for the nuclear medicine imaging and the most used gamma source. Now for the Bateman's equation, what is it? It is the math mathematical model describing abundances and activities in a decay chain as a function of time. It is based on the decay rates and initial abundances. Now Bateman's equation was formulated first by Ernest Rutherford in 1905 and the analytical solution was provided by Harry Bateman in 1910. For Bateman's equations, we have to know these terms like NP and lambda P being the number and decay constant of parent radionuclide atoms respectively and ND and lambda D are number and decay constants of daughter radionuclides respectively and T stands for time. The radioactive decay equations for parent and daughter are like this. dnp by dt is equal to minus lambda p dnp where minus stands for the decay or showing that the reduction of the number of molecules because parent will not be growing anymore. It will be decaying only being the first one in the radioactive series. While the daughter radionuclide there is a growth. Lambda p n p which corresponds to the decay of the parental radionuclide and then there is a subtraction or a reduction because of the decay of itself reduction of or decay of the daughter radionuclide lambda d n d so the formula is like this or the equation stands like this lambda p n p minus lambda d n d 
Now this accumulated daughter radionuclide in time t is dn d is equal to lambda p n p dt minus lambda d n d dt. Where the first term is for the production, the second is for the decay. Now this uh, initial equation written again here for the important reason, later on you'll come to know, dn by dt, dn d by dt is equal to lambda p n p minus lambda d n d, which is the rate of accumulation of this daughter radiation applied. While this same equation, if written in a different format, like this right hand side term, uh, when if it is taken over to the left hand side, like dn d, by dt plus lambda d n d is equal to lambda p n p zero e raised to minus lambda p t. All this stands for n p, and this will be in the form of linear first order differential equation. We can call it as an equation one. If we solve or integrate this equation one, then we'll get like this: n d is equal to lambda p n p zero upon lambda d minus lambda p into e raised to minus lambda p t minus e raised to minus lambda d t. Now if at time is equal to zero or the initial daughter radioactivity is there in the form of n d zero number of atoms initial is like that then another term is introduced and this is equal to lambda p and p zero upon lambda d minus lambda p into e raised to minus lambda p t minus e raised to minus lambda d t plus n d zero into e raised to minus lambda d t this corresponds to the decayed or leftover radioactivity of the initial daughter radionuclide if it was present at time zero now this equation to carry it over here now we want to convert this number of radioactive atoms into the radioactivity in the form of milli curie and for that we have to use another uh, we have to introduce some more and over this in between this uh, i'll be filling them with the equations which will reach of us to this equation final equation which we want to know here ap stands for activity of parent radionuclide and ad stands for activity of daughter radionuclide by multiplying these both sides by equation uh, by lambda d this equation two when you multiply it by lambda d then you can convert it for this a you come to know and substituting this ad for lambda d and d because a is equal to lambda n this is the formula so ad it will be lambda d into nd which we have multiplied and uh, so we have to convert it accordingly and this lambda p n p zero can become a p zero now here you can see this is what is happening now um, a d t is equal to a p zero into lambda d upon lambda d minus lambda p into e raised to minus lambda p t minus e raised to minus lambda d t plus a d zero into e raised to minus lambda d t. Here it's something extra that you can see here is the b r or the branching ratio which is in green. Uh, Branching ratio is a fraction of particles which decay by an individual decay mode with respect to the total number of particles which decay. This, for example, uh, in Moli 99, again the same curve we are talking about, if it decays directly to the granddaughter, then there is a 13% of this initial molecular parent radioactivity directly decaying to granddaughter and not the daughter radionuclide, then 87% or 0.87 fraction of the parental radionuclide is what is going to give you this accumulated activity. So you have to multiply that by BR or branching ratio. This is an example I've given you and many other radioactive series where the parent radionuclide directly jumps over and does not decay in, in step by step. In this case, in that case, that BR is important to be introduced. 
So this is the important Bateman's equation. ADT is equal to AP0 into lambda D upon lambda D minus lambda P into E raised to minus lambda PT minus E raised to minus lambda DT into BR. All this is actually the representation of accumulated radioactivity of the dotted radionuclide over the period of time T and the, if there is any initial radioactivity of the daughter radionuclide, then AD0, then that also will be left over over the time and that has to be added to. So this kind of uh, equation is very important and it is used for the determination of radioactivity that you can get or the yield that you can get from the generators. Uh, over the particular time for a particular time and how when will you get the maximum uh, yield and uh, when will the equilibrium be established, re-established, all this can be found out by this Bateman's equation. Now what is transient equilibrium? When the decay constant lambda of the parent radionuclide is lesser than the daughter radionuclide by a factor of 10 to 100. Lambda P is lesser than lambda D. If we are talking about half-life, it becomes the inverse relation because lambda is equal to 0.693 upon T half. So in this way, it is T half of parent being more than T half of daughter by the factor of 10 to 100. So the rate of change of this parent radionuclide and that of daughter are in constant proportion in the transient equilibrium that is AD upon AP is equal to K. It is constant. And from this graph also you can see these curves are running parallelly and the daughter radionuclide can grow over the parent nuclei only if the branching ratio is not uh, less than one because in technetium 99 m which i have shown about the body uh, nine, uh, which i have talked about that is where the uh, direct uh, technetium 99 g is formed from the parent radionuclide and 13 percent of it so this curve will be below the parental nuclear radioactivity decay curve so uh, that there will be slight modification, but the constancy of proportion AD by AP is equal to K will still be followed in the molytechnician generator. Now for the secular equilibrium, when the decay constant of parent radionuclide is much, much lesser by factor of 100 or more, lambda P is lesser than lambda D by more, factor more than 100. While T half P, if we want to talk in that terms, it will be much, much more than the T half D. So at secular equilibrium, the activity of daughter radionuclide is taken as equal to that of parent radionuclide. And it will be uh, seeming or looking like the daughter radioactivity is decaying in the at the rate of the parental decay itself. So this kind of merging of the curves can happen at the term of equilibrium, equilibrium, even if you have eluted in between, it will re-establish itself and reach the parental nuclei radioactivity decay curve. Now for the examples, there are four examples as you see here, Molly 99, uh, Germanium 68, Tungsten uh, 188, and cesium-137 generators. And the stable granddaughters, as you can see, this is a practically stable technetium-99. Otherwise, it's half-life. Theoretically, it is 2.1 into 10 raised to five years, but you can take it as practically stable. Zinc-68 is a stable uh, granddaughter, while osmium-188 is the stable granddaughter for this generator, tungsten rhenium generator and barium-137 is the stable granddaughter for cesium-137 M barium generator. Now here, one by one, we can see that moly technetium generator follow the transient equilibrium because the half-life of the parent is 66 hours and that of the daughter is 6 hours. And as you have already seen and I told you about this, the technetium 19 is a workhorse radionuclide and you can say that without which uh, 85 to 90 percent of nuclear medicine imaging procedures are not possible 
and uh, because they are based on the technetium labeled technetium 19 and m labeled uh, radio pharmaceuticals and uh, that is why it becomes very important this generator as a very important most famous cow used and here you can see them in the different forms and this was the manual generator while now it's auto generator used germanium 68 gallium 68 generator or as a secular equilibrium because of a very long half-life of germanium 68 while the gallium 68 the daughter gets has a t half of 68 minutes only and uh, this is a pet radionuclide positron emitter and uh, because of the in-house production and if the radio labeling is established much better then it can have a potential it has a potential of becoming a workhorse pet radionuclide this germanium 68 can also be used as a source for gallium 68 for a pet qc the qc of the uh, pet imaging systems so this is also another advantage where you don't have to extract the gallium 68 only using this source germanium 68 can give the uh, daughter radionuclide which is actually working as a positron emitter now for the tungsten rhenium generator this rhenium 188 generator uh, radionuclide is a therapeutic radionuclide of choice and it can be uh, a potential workhorse radionuclide uh, in-house product production because uh, of the possibility of its getting labeled to many varieties and it has a technetium 19 nm um, similar to that technetium uh, in the periodic table if you see they are transition elements and uh, however the labeling characteristics have to be standardized then it has a potential of becoming a therapeutic radionuclide now the half life if you see here are uh, 69.4 days for the parent and 17 hours for the uh, rhenium uh, 188 and here it is almost practically secular equilibrium because it's almost 100 the factor mm, if you can see from this uh, but still practically we can consider it as a secular equilibrium following generator now 137 cesium 137 m barium generator is uh, also is also following secular equilibrium and this is a very ideal a generator for the experimental setup where repetitive experiments can be performed using this short-lived radionuclide and a very small amount is required because the long-lived cesium-137 will be keep on producing this barium 137 m and uh, this is the actual pure gamma emitter 662 kb and not the cesium-137 which is a beta emitter so it looks like as if cesium-137 is producing the gamma ray it's a pure gamma emitter no it is actually 137 m barium which is emitting the 662 kb gamma so many repetitive experiments and not only that we can also uh, get into the radioactive equilibrium uh, studies we can study the uh, trend or the format of secu secular equilibrium and all these studies can be done for the beginners and the students it is a very useful generator now let us summarize what i have uh, shown in this slides the first one we saw what is the definition what is radioactive equilibrium we saw the application in the form of radionuclide generators the bateman's equation as the basis to determine their radioactivity with respect to time of the daughter radioactivity to determine that the transient equilibrium secular equilibrium and the different examples of application of this radioactive equilibrium in the form of dot uh, radionuclide generators inside the nuclear medicine department now the reference I have used is Textbook of Nuclear Medicine, Volume 1, Basic Science by John Harbert and Antonia de Rocha and uh, Physics in Nuclear Medicine by James A. Sorensen and Michael E. Phelps. Now please be tuned to my upcoming video on working principle of radionuclide generators. Some of the uh, glimpses I have shown in this uh, presentation but i will talk more about the principles of the radionuclide generators in the next video 
Now, please feel free to uh, put up your comments, suggestions, or any queries or anything that you want to connect to or communicate to us through support a nuclear medicine solutions.in. Thank you. Thank you.